Our seventh presenter is Vishnu Raguraman, whose presentation is titled Multi-Principle Element Alloys, The Key to the Future. So alloys are one of the oldest and most important inventions in human history. It's formed when we combine two or more elements together to create a new material. The first alloy was made nearly 5,000 years ago. It is a combination of copper and tin. You may have heard of it, it's called bronze. It's an alloy, it's so important that an entire period of human history was named after it. And of course, in the subsequent years, we have made many other fundamental alloys, steel, brass, cast iron, pewter, etc. And while our methods of making these alloys have become more and more sophisticated, we always followed one fundamental rule, is that alloys have one principal element. Bronze, for example, is 88% copper and about 12% tin. Steel can be up to 97% iron and 3% carbon. The main element in an alloy dominates and everything else is in small concentrations. This was until about the 90s when scientists asked, well, what happens if we try to make a multi-principle element alloy, which is an alloy with many different elements in roughly similar concentrations, as opposed to having one element that dominates? Well, the conventional wisdom at that time was that such an alloy would just be too unstable to exist. It would break down. It would not be of any use. There's no point thinking in, in this direction. But out of curiosity, uh, scientists still persisted. And not only were they successful in making such alloys, I have an example here from a scientist called Fan Yang from the Northwestern Polytechnical University in China, one of many examples. But on testing these alloys, they found that they have phenomenal physical properties, high strength, high ductility, great durability, a great resistance to corrosion, good at high temperatures. And in many cases, these properties were better than those seen in conventional alloys, you know, like steel or bronze. So this essentially skyrocketed. So it went from a bunch of scientists having hypothetical discussion to, oh my god, we could be replacing steel. We could be replacing aluminum-based alloys. This is huge. So both governments and industries seeing this obviously decided to invest. And as a result, multi-principle element alloys today is an extremely active area of research, both from the experimental standpoint, where they actually synthesize and make these things in the lab, and from the computer simulation standpoint, which is where I work. Uh, in my research, I build and uh, run state-of-the-art simulation tools that not only really predict these wonderful physical properties, but also actively look for more and more such alloys that could potentially change the world. And this is what truly excites me. So in the periodic table, if you take away the toxic elements, you take away the radioactive elements, there are about 75 elements remaining out of which you can make alloys. This roughly translates to about 600 billion possible alloys. It really begs the question, what's out there that we haven't found? Could there be a room temperature superconductor? Could there be some sort of battery material that's fast charging and it has a long life? You could drive from here to California and one charge or something. Uh, what if there's some lightweight material? You make lighter aircrafts that require less fuel. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And these are the things that truly excite people in my field. Thank you.